Next, we will discuss how to do calculus with the arc cosecant function of x. Let's consider the arc cosecant function and let's find its derivative. Of course, we can use the limit definition of the derivative, however, we get stuck quick. So, let's try the implicit differentiation instead. First, let's apply the cosecant function to both sides and then differentiate each side. On the left side, we use the chain rule, and on the right side, it is just the derivative of x. Let's divide both sides by negative cosecant y cotangent y, and replace y with arc cosecant of x. We definitely learned how to simplify such expression in trigonometry. So let's simplify this expression using the procedure that we developed in trigonometry. First, introduce theta by labeling everything inside the parentheses as theta. The original expression is not very simple in terms of theta. But what do we know about theta? From its definition, we know the domain of theta and can produce the following statement. Next, we recall the definitions of both involved trigonometric functions. Now, we can draw a reference triangle with theta in standard position and label the sides appropriately. We then use the Pythagorean theorem to find the missing side. And finally, we plug in the needed sides into the expression in question. However, this argument only works if x is greater than 0, because the hypotenuse in the reference triangle must be greater than 0. What do we do if x is negative? If x is negative, then we make the hypotenuse positive by factoring out the negative sign and drawing the reference triangle in the fourth quadrant. After simplifying the trigonometric expression, we now have two formulas, one for positive x and one for negative x. However, this can be elegantly written as a single formula using the absolute value notation. In summary, we now have the formula for the derivative of arc cosecant function as well as the formula for the antiderivative of its derivative. Now, we can find the derivative of the following function. We start the process by recognizing that we have to find the derivative of a composition of arc cosecant function applied to the exponential function with base 2, which is equal to the following expression, in which we know how to find all the components. After simplifying, we get the final result. Let's do another example. We start the process by recognizing that we have to find the derivative of a composition of the reciprocal function applied to the arc cosecant of x, which is equal to the following expression, in which we know how to find all the components. And there isn't much to simplify here. Let's do an example of integration. We first recognize the pattern and rearrange the integrand. Then, set up the substitution by setting a new variable, let's say t, equal to arc cosecant of x and finding the differential of t. Next, we plug everything into the original integral and notice how, because of the discovered pattern, we have nothing but the function of t left in the integral. We finish the process by finding the antiderivative and plugging the original function arc cosecant of x back for t. If you are familiar with the derivative of arc secant function, then you probably noticed that we now have two expressions for the same indefinite integral. How is this possible? The reason is the cofunction identity for inverse trigonometric functions that states that the arc cosecant of x plus arc secant of x equals to pi over 2, which means that the negative arc cosecant of x is the same as the arc secant of x, 
but they are pi over two units apart. So it doesn't matter which antiderivative you will use. Let's do another example. This time we'll do linear substitution. We set up the linear substitution by setting t equal to 5x and finding the differential of t and expressing the x in terms of dt. As a result, we have a simple indefinite integral in terms of t. We continue with the integration process by finding the antiderivative and replacing t with the original function. Notice that alternatively we could have finished this problem by using the arc secant of x function as the antiderivative. Both answers are correct. We discussed how to differentiate and integrate the functions that have arc cosecant of x function as one of their components.